we're going to look at the um, oral hypoglycemics. This is primarily used hypoglycemics. This is primarily used in diabetes mellitus type 2 to control other blood sugar levels. So we have basically um, four broad categories with one new one. So let's just look at that. So first one we're going to have is oral sulfonylureas. Uh, then we have metformin. Then we have the um, diazolidine diones. And then we have the uh, uh, glucosidase inhibitors. So, um, just looking at them broadly, just looking at it a little more broadly, um, the oral sulfonylurea, um, okay, let me just, um, the oral sulfonylurea is going to be a uh, secretagog, so it's going to just uh, cause the cell to just make more insulin. Um, metformin and thiazoltine dions act by the PPAR receptor, and alpha glucosidase acts in the actual GIT to prevent uh, uptake. And so this is going to be the general way of looking at it. Now, um, um, in, uh, how do sulfonylureas work? Well, sulfonylureas work um, by blocking the potassium channel on the beta cell and this is going to activate calcium channels and it's going to lead to insulin release. Um, now, the first generation uh, we have tolbutamide, acetohexamide, and chlorpropamide. Um, just little things about these. Um, tolbutamide was good for kidneys. It has decreased duration of action, so there's decreased risk of hypoglycemia, and it's good for kidneys. It, it doesn't. It is not uh, renally extruded. But acetohexamide, hexamide, kidneys are going to be an X. You cannot give it, use it for kidneys. Contra, contraindicated. With chlorpropamide, you put, pretty much you have the disulfiram-like reaction. Um, and also, it's going to act like ADH, so it's going to lead to uh, super inappropriate ADH, and um, that can lead to dilutional hyponatremia. Um, so that's the first generation. In the second generation, uh, we have uh, we have glyburide. Glipizide and glimapride. Um, I just get your message. I'm at the library. And, um, we're coming up, we're coming up going in. Okay, so glipizide uh, is not for renal. Um, this is not for someone with liver failure. You know, glamour card you can use for both. Um, what are going to be some adverse effects? Um, the adverse effects, obviously, because this increases uh, insulin, is going to be hypoglycemia. Um, and obviously, if you increase insulin, you can get weight gain. Um, and it also can, because of the, uh, the SIADH, you cannot use it for a uh, post MI patient and of course it has a sulfa allergy as well and then uh, yeah the other thing we need to mention is awful surrounding areas and thiazolidine diamonds have sulfa allergies and it's sulfa urea and thia so uh, those are the two things remember there now um, with metformin metformin is also called a glucophage and uh, what it does is it act it activates the PPAR receptor, and so you basically you have insulin-like action there, and it's skipping the whole receptor as well, and so um, it's going to uh, decrease uh, hepatic glucose, 
uh, it's going to uh, increase growth it's going to increase uptake glucose uptake in muscle so it's going to do all that um, and it's, uh, it's it's considered a euglycemic meaning it never it doesn't even make you hypoglycemic so you don't have to worry about hypoglycemia and so um, clinically when you use it um, you can it, it actually works uh, synergistically Uh, with oral sulfonylureas, so that's that's a nice point there. Now, um, adverse effect. Uh, the main adverse effect is going to be GIT distress, but you can also get uh, lactic acidosis, and that's just because uh, you have increased uh, intracellular uh, glucose. Um, with thiazolidin diodes, again, is this is going to activate PPAR. Which is gonna, you know, you're gonna have uh, increased protein, uh, increased glucose uptake, uh, and decreased lipolysis. So you get basically insulin actions. Um, Also give them something as well um, clinically so let's just clinical uses uh, you cannot use it with insulin uh, you cannot use it with someone who's because uh, this is because you have the fluid retention and um, but you can you can use it with uh, again metformin and oral sulfonylureas Okay. Um, now, what are the drugs? Well, in the first generation, uh, we have a uh, tioglitazone, but this was subsequently stopped because of uh, hepatotoxicity. So then they made a second generation of drugs, um, which didn't have that problem. And that was uh, uh, rosiglitazone and pioglitazone. Um, the alpha glucosidase inhibitors, they just kind of block uh, glucosidase. And so, what that means is uh, you have decreased carbohydrate and then you have decreased postprandial glucose as well. Um, the adverse effects are just going to be basically flatulence and all that stuff and it's okay to use with uh, metformin. Um, now the new drugs uh, uses another thing is called GLP-1 also known as incretin. Um, incretin actually is normally secreted by the uh, small intestine and it actually activates beta cells so that's going to increase insulin and so this is another target of drugs um, we have two drugs that work on this first is going to be exanatide and the next one is going to be uh, citagliptin And this is going to just basically be a full agonist of GLP-1. And so uh, this cannot be used with oral sulfonylureas. And this is basically going to block dipeptidyl peptidase 4, which normally uh, it inactivates on GLP-1.